Hello everyone and welcome back to the Strife Solution Startup here on the Yogscast server. I am of course William Strife and I am playing Yogscast Complete. Uh, if you're interested in playing along with the uh, version of modded Minecraft that we've got here, what the heck has happened to the my base? What on earth? What the hell is this? Oh, that is a weird graphical glitch that happened. I, uh. Uh. What on earth? Well. It's moving. Okay. Um. I'm, I'm gonna ignore that and act like it's not happening because it's ugly and um, I don't know what the deal is. Anyways, um, here I am on the Oxcast Complete server and uh, today... Got another creeper down here. Stupid creeper. Anyways, uh, today on the Oxcast Complete server, I am of course working on uh, digital mining because that is that has been the name of the game for a while that I've been needing to get towards. I'm up to the point where uh, this facility is not cutting the job and I'm I'm really... For the last several episodes, I've been gearing up to uh, replacing it and building a... Oh, jeez, keep that out of the viewpoint. Uh, I've been gearing up to the point where I'm going to build the Strife Solution um, business park on this land. Uh, but in order to do that, obviously, I have to have all the resources to uh, build the platform, do the terraforming, and then actually build the tower that I'm going that is going to serve as the solution... Uh, you know, headquarters, uh, the solution towers. So, uh, to that end, today, the name of the game is Digital Miner. And to create the Digital Miner, I'm gonna need to create a robot, two logistical sorters, and two teleport cores to create the Digital Miner. I'm also going to need, uh, logistical pipes to get the materials out of the Digital Miner. The crafting of this shouldn't actually take too long. What's going to take a long time is the mining. I'm going to need to set up the Digital Miner to mine basalt, uh, to remove the volcano, and I'm also going to need to go to the, to the nether, and because there are so many useful materials in the nether beyond nether rock, which I need to create the red nether brick, which is going to cons uh, make up the tower as well, uh, I'm going to need to mine up everything. So, nether rack, soul sand, and um, ores, all of it, uh, basically anything available, I'm going to take it all. So, that, my friends, is the name of the game for today. So, uh, let's get on with creating the digital miner. Now, to make this, I'm gonna need a whole bunch of atomic cores, so I went and I pre-crafted these in the crafting station here. Um, to make a crafting station, just go ahead and, um, run a crafting table back through the crafting grid, and you get a crafting station, and it retains its inventory here. So go ahead and break those down. So, uh, digital miner, let's see what we gotta do to make this. Uh, I'm gonna need a steel casing, the atomic cores I've done, uh, basic circuits I've got in my inventory. Let's do the logistical sorters. To make these, I need iron, circuits, and uh, a piston. So, let's just uh, shift... Whoops. Let's just shift-click to make this. Make two of these babies. Uh, unfortunately, they do not stack, so, you know, that's not optimal, but uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, next up are, is the robot, and to make the robot, I'm going to need to make an electronic chest first. I should have everything in my inventory for this. Nope, I don't. I'm missing the glass. Okay, so uh, shift-click. There we go. We've got ourselves another electronic chest. Uh, next up after that is uh, the robot, which I shouldn't have too much trouble with. I do have to make some energy tablets first, though. So we'll make two of those. Um, and hop right back, and we'll make ourselves the robot, which I'm not going to be able to shift-click for, but... And um, the steel ingot, and there we go. We've got ourselves a robot. Uh, next up is the teleportation cores. So just shift click. I only needed two of these. Can, do they stack? Yes, they do stack. That's lucky. Uh, okay, so with that, almost everything is done with creating this. I just need to make a steel casing. Make one steel casing, and now with that done, uh, I'm not going to be able to shift click this again, but there we go. The circuit, the logistical sorters on either side of that, two teleportation cores, a steel casing, and a robot in the middle, and presto, we've got a digital miner. What do you know? Lo and behold, this thing is absolutely amazing. It's, it's also really big, so I'm just going to pop it down. That thing is huge. Look at this. So I'm going to go over the basic mechanics of how this thing functions. 
Okay, so this thing is, uh, you know, relatively complicated. Uh, there are a lot of features to it, there are a lot of different ways that you can get it functioning, and, um... There are a lot of different settings to it, but uh, I'm going to cover as much as I can without um, completely screwing you up. Uh, let's uh, let's cover the factors about how this uh, digital miner works. First of all, um, it takes speed and energy upgrades just like all other mechanism machines. So, you know, uh, uh, same thing as uh, with the factories and the processing machines, you know, speed upgrades at six, um, energy upgrades at nine, uh, because then it's it remains uh, manageable. So upgrades go in the corner just like everything else. Uh, but there are also a whole bunch of settings. There's the reset button, so after you uh, go into the configuration and change things and you start this thing running, uh, whenever you stop it running, if you need to change anything, the config button is still grayed out, so you have to hit reset to reset the entire machine and tell it that, you know, you need to go in and change things. There's also silk touch mode. Silk touch mode is uh, something from vanilla Minecraft. Silk touch is where uh, you could, it's an enchantment that you could say apply to a pick. And if you use that pick to mine up stone, you wouldn't get cobblestone, you would get smooth stone um, instead which, you know, is su super, super useful, uh, depending on what you're trying to get. Some things you can only acquire via Silk Touch. Um, however, Silk Touch, uh, the reason why it's available in the Digital Miner is a very different reason. Uh, whenever you mine, say, the raw ore for redstone or coal, those things drop as items on the floor. You know, you, you mine up coal, and you get the balls of coal, you mine up redstone, you get the bits of redstone that fall onto the floor, and, you know, it varies by ore, you know, whenever you break a, a, a block of redstone ore, you get like, I don't know, eight uh, bits of redstone out of it. Whenever you block, uh, break a block of um, coal ore, you get one lump of coal. Well, with fortune, the fortune enchant, uh, which is also from vanilla Minecraft, uh, whenever you break a ore block that drops entities like coal or redstone, fortune gives you a chance to uh, double the number of entities that the ore drops. So there's a chance that a block of uh, that a block of coal ore will drop two lumps of coal. There's a chance that you'll not, you know, you won't get six pieces of redstone, you'll get 12 pieces of redstone, uh, that type of thing. Uh, but it's kind of hit and miss, uh, you know, it's it's a chance to double, it's not a guarantee to double. So the problem uh, is that, you know, there's no guaranteed way to double, as, as opposed to this system right here, where you put your ore in and you can double or triple, triple, you know, like say your iron ore, um, with, uh, with redstone, there's no way for you to, you know, double your redstone that you dig up. But, mechanism, there's a system by which you can circumvent that. If you use Silk Touch and you get your hands on just the raw redstone ore, the raw coal ore, and then you send it through, I believe, the Elite Factory. Uh, well, not the Elite Factory, but if you send it through the Enriching System, it will automatically double your uh, redstone, it will automatically double your coal. Um, it will basically perform the fortune enchant, but in order to do that, you have to use silk touch to get your hands on the actual coal, uh, the actual ore blocks instead of, you know, the, the, the raw redstone or the lumps of coal. So that's why silk touch is in the digital miner. Uh, it's for the express purpose of being able to get your hands on redstone ore and coal ore, which is something you typically can't pick up without silk touch. So, uh, that's why Silk Touch is there. That being said, that is going to gobble up tons of extra power. It's a whole lot more cost-effective to mine up cobblestone and then re-smelt it into smooth stone or something like that. So, Silk Touch, you know, it's it's super, super expensive only to be used whenever you're looking to get your hands on uncommon ores, which normally break into pieces uh, whenever you mine them up. Then, uh, there's also this over here, which is auto-pull. Now, Auto pull works in conjunction with this slot up here, which is the replacement block. If you put something in there, just left click, you see it didn't actually reduce the stack and then I can put this in its inventory. Uh, auto replace is that the digital miner literally teleports uh, blocks out of the world and uh, into its inventory. So what you can do is you can tell it to replace the blocks with um, uh, you know, any sort of material that you tell it to. In this case, I told it to use cobblestone as a replacer, and uh, if you turn auto-pull on, it will automatically pull from this slot up here. You can put a chest on top of it, you can hook a pipe up, to up uh, to it, and for that matter, I should probably cover the fact that this is a logistical transporter right here. 
which is uh, something else on the list that I need to make. But a logistical transporter is just some steel ingots with a basic circuit, and you make eight of them. This is um, the mechanism version of item pipes, so uh, and they work just like the uh, fluid pipes, uh, the, the the mechanical pipes that I use for the garden outside. You can change and swap the uh, the inputs and the outputs on them with a configurator tool. Now. Um, Naturally, you know, if you're mining out a large area, you're going to need to uh, have a whole bunch of materials if you want to use the auto-replace feature, so you can put, like, a diamond chest on top of it, and it will auto-pull the items out of the chest as needed. Um, so, with all of that done, let's go into the configuration information. The configuration is really what's going to confuse people. Up to this point, most people will follow and understand how the digital miner functions. Um... Ooh, and uh, yes, before I do that, auto-eject is another feature. You can turn auto-eject on, and it'll... Uh, normally, whenever it mines stuff up, it will uh, it put the items into its inventory down here. However, um, if you have auto-eject on, it'll kick things out this back slot here. And it does hook up to uh, mechanical pipes. I'm pretty sure that it will hook up to a lot of other types of uh, item pipes as well. And um, you can just kick it out into a, uh, a chest below, which is uh, the way that I am going to use this thing. Now, the other thing that I have to do is um, tell you about how the configuration works. So, the digital miner works in columns, okay? It works in massive columns. So, the first setting that you have is the radius, and the radius is how far out it goes in any given direction. So, the radius, I can set it to like 12, and it'll set to 12, but if I try to set it to, say, 60, it, it won't set to 60. It maxes out at 32. So, in other words, it'll mine 32 blocks out that way, 32 blocks out that way, 32 that way, 32 that way, so 32 blocks in every direction, and that little, what looks like a kind of like an antenna on the bottom of it, that's the center block that it's counting out from, okay? So f that block is zero, so the uh, leg over there would be one, two, three, four, five, you know, and so on. So uh, that's how it counts its blocks out. And uh, the next thing to know is the minimum and maximum. This is also something that some people don't really understand. The minimum and maximum is really simple. Minimum, this represents the uh, world height low, and this represents the world height high. So if I just uh, hit F3 here to bring up the debug feed, you can see there's a X, Y, and Z, or X, Y, Z, if uh, you do not speak American English. Um, there uh, is the Y value right there, and if I jump, you can see the Y value changing. That's uh, the world height. So I'm sitting at level 83. So if I wanted this thing to mine out everything in the house, I could tell it to mine uh, everything in at the Y level of 83. But simply put, uh, you know, once you're at level zero, you're at the bottom of the map. Once you're at like, I think it's 260 something, you're at the top of the world map. So uh, minimum defines the, uh, the lowest block level in the world it will mine to, and maximum defines the highest block level in the world it will mine to. So I can set this, to, I can just leave minimum at zero because that'll allow it to mine all the way to bedrock. And then I can set maximum to like 200 and it'll mine all the way up into the sky where, like, there are practically no blocks. Or, you know, alternatively, because there are clouds up in the sky in various locations um, in this mod pack, it you could feasibly put this on the ground and tell it to mine everything um, from, you know, three or four layers above the digital miner and then, you know, everything up to the maximum height of the sky, and it'll mine up clouds for you, you know? Uh, that's that's an option, but that's how it works. Your radius is how far out from the center of this thing it will look, and your maximum and minimum define how far down into the world and how far up in the world, keeping in mind that um, they use the explicit coordinates here, um, Y, uh, the Y value. It's not relative to the location of the digital miner, it is explicitly, you know, the height of the world map. So, that's how it all works. Um, the next thing to uh, tell you is that you can instruct this thing on what you want it to mine, okay? You can come in here to item stack and you can you can basically give it a list of things that you want it to mine or not mine. Um, a good example would be if I came in here to item stack, I could tell it to just mine out cobblestone. If I just click that right there and hit save, it'll only mine out cobblestone now. But, you know, cobblestone is kind of useless. Why, why on earth would you want that? Um, it is possible, however, to tell it, hey, mine up cobblestone. But wait, what if I don't want 
cobblestone? What if I want everything ex except cobblestone? Well, I can come down here to inverse mode and turn that on. And as you can see, this is the marker for whether inverse mode is on or off. If inverse mode is on, it will use the um, instructions or the filter that you've put over here, and it will mine out every it'll mine out everything except for what's in the filter list over here. So right now, with inverse mode on, it will mine out everything in the world except for cobblestone. Inverse mode is super useful if you're looking to mine up everything except for a couple of specific items. Uh, in my case, that's not what I'm looking for, though, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Now, what's, a f what's far more useful is the ore dictionary, or the ore directory, or however you want to call it. Um, the way that this works is you can actually... Uh, tell it to mine out specific things and this requires that you understand slightly a little bit of coding but the most effective method system that you can use is to type in star or star and what this actually does is with the stars on either side of the word or this is going to tell the digital miner just look at all the blocks there are out there to mine okay look at all the blocks there are to mine and if any of those blocks have the word or, in their name, mine it. So I've literally told this thing, mine anything with the word or in its name. Which, you know, given the fact that you don't mine up iron, you mine up iron ore. You don't mine up copper, you mine up copper ore. You don't mine up redstone, you mine up redstone ore. So, um... This is, uh, this is a really fast and easy way to configure the thing. There, I mean, the filter is easy and instant. It works with everything in the overworld. It works with everything in the nether. It works with everything. So, um, super, super useful, super valuable. Uh, and which, which, is, which is really what makes this thing so, so, so useful. So uh, that should be everything about the digital miner. Uh, now all I have to do is take this baby out to the uh, volcano outside and actually go about um, mining it up, uh, setting it up, and uh, setting up some mobile power, which I'm going to use uh, hydrogen generators for, and um, get it to mining out the basalt that I'm going to need to build the solution tower. Okay, everyone, so uh, I've come out to uh, the volcano here, and I have set up the digital miner with uh, a series of chests, and I've already set it up. Um, this is the reservoir, Ender IO. Infinite water goes into the electrolytic separators on the side, splits the hydrogen out, go feeds directly into the uh, hydrogen generators. And um, here uh, I've got universal cable feeding power straight back into the hydroelectric uh, the electrolytic separators, and, uh, powers are running straight into the digital miner. Uh, yeah, this is pretty much done. Silk touches on, uh, it's set to auto-eject on, and, um, the, uh, ore dictionary is already set. I'm telling it to just mine up, uh, basalt from the world, so it should work outright. Now all I gotta do is hit start, and, uh, there you go. It's, uh, it's spitting out basalt, and uh, I've built everything up on a cobblestone platform, so I'll have space to uh, reclaim it whenever uh, the time is right. Okay, everyone, hey, check it out. I've, uh, it's finished its job. It's been several hours since I set this thing up. Um, I know I originally set it up with uh, Silk Touch on, but I turned it off because that turned out to be a much larger power monger than I expected. And, um, I can actually go about now disassembling this, but before I do, uh, check out the chests here. This is a lot more basalt than I am ever going to need. I also took the extra time that I had on my hands to, uh, tell it to silk mine up some coal ore so I can run it through the processing system. But, uh, the third diamond chest turned out to be kind of, uh, pointless, useless. So, um, the next step for me is to hop out head over to the nether. Now, I've already built a pumping house in the nether while this thing was working away, so uh, I'll see you guys in the nether. Okay, everyone, so here I am in the nether. Uh, doesn't look like it because I'm inside of a cobblestone box, but uh, built it on my own. As you can see, nether. Okay, so the main portal is uh, about over here, and uh, this is the warp house that I built, so this is my little mining house. Now, even though the clipboard says mine everything, the only thing that I'm going to bother with right now is netherrack. Uh, specifically because that's all that I really, really need at the moment. Okay, everything seems to be good to go. Now that that is done, there is one particular problem. Netherrack is used to make individual bricks. Um, and then the bricks are used to create the actual 
nether brick blocks. So naturally I have to smelt the nether rack. Well, in order to do this, I've set up a tiny little processing chain over here. This is an advanced uh, uh, energized smelting factory that I uh, created. It's already got its upgrades in it and everything. Uh, so what's going to happen is it's going to kick out the nether rack out the back and it's going to drop into this diamond chest, which I've set up as a buffer. Now, luckily, because mechanism pipes... Uh, logistical transporting pipes are so versatile, I can actually set this thing to move um, Netherrack right out of the uh, the buffer chest into the uh, smelter without the need of, uh, you know, any extra faffing about. So if I just hold down shift and use it on the... There we go. See? It's ready. It's set to uh, pull items out. And um, the other thing that I did that I haven't shown you guys that I didn't show you on camera was I built this auto crafting table mark two from Imbus Core. So if I show you the crafting recipe, it's just a couple of golden nuggets, a uh, crafting table, chest, and some cobblestone and wood planks. So it's not really expensive to create. So the thing about this is that each side corresponds to a different input in this thing. And then the top is where you have to pump things out to uh, retrieve the finished product. So. Uh, for every four nether rack that I mine up, I'm gonna make one nether brick block, so this thing is gonna have to be running for a long time, and for that matter, I don't even know that these four hydrogen jennies are gonna be enough to power both the miner and the factory. Um, it's something that I'm gonna find out as I go. Uh, system should be running, should be getting plenty of power now. Okay, yeah, it's getting its power. Now, uh, because this thing also needs power, I'm gonna put one, two, three, four. I'm gonna put four of these in there. Auto sort is on. So there you go. It finished them and it kicked them right back out into this inventory here. Now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to set that up like so. There you go. It's done. It's working. Okay. So the way that Imbus works is that you set up the crafting recipe in here. And uh, it'll show the thing, but it won't actually start crafting unless the stuff is in its inventory. And then obviously because I have this logistical transporter set up, it'll just kick the stuff right out into the top. And, uh, you know, bingo ready to go. Bish bash bosh. Okay everyone, it has been hours, and I mean hours, since uh, I last recorded, and uh, now the uh, the digital the digital miner, it's far from done mining the world out. It, it still has 158,000 nether rack to go, but I'm up to a point where I have far, far more nether brick than I need, if you see. Uh, it's been working away this entire time, just pumping straight out, and much to my surprise, the buffer is pretty much useless. Um, I'm smelting fast enough. That being said, I, uh, I had to take out two speed upgrades to maintain, uh, power balance with just these four hydrogen generators. But anyways, um, it's, it's, it's up to a point where I need to stop this thing, and, um, while I could pick this thing up and, um, drag it back to my base, um, I'm not going to do that because I can leave it here and, uh, just have it mine up uh, the ores out of the uh, out of this dimension here, the nether, and uh, pump it into that chest right there. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. But uh, for the most part, I am done. All I have to do is move this chest back to base. And uh, next time, I will be, you know, actually going through the trouble of setting up uh, the boundaries for where I want the main platform to be that Solution Tower is going to be built on, and I'm going to be going about, you know, actually measuring things, uh, building up the platform, and then uh, subsequently building the tower on top of that platform. But uh, that'll have to wait until next episode. This episode is probably pretty long as it is. But uh, without further ado, I am William Strife of Strife Solutions here on the Yoxcast server playing Yoxcast Complete, available on the AT Launcher, and I will see all of you next time. Bye!